Hello everybody. Today I will show you how you can host multiple WordPress websites on the same server. I've been seeing this question quite a lot lately, so I decided to do a quick video. I will do the demo on my DigitalOcean account. If you don't have a DigitalOcean account yet, you can use my referral link down in the video description to get a hundred dollars free credit so that you can spin up your own servers. So the first thing that I will do is click this button to get started with a droplet. So once I'm here, the next thing that I would like to do is click on the marketplace where we would be able to find a WordPress image, which would save us the time to do the full server configuration. So I would just click on the WordPress um, image here. Then I would choose the size of my droplet. I would go for this premium Intel one, which is a new option provided by DigitalOcean and I'll just choose the $6 per month plan. Then if I scroll a little bit further down, I'll choose the region that's closest to me. After that, I'll select all of my SH keys. If you don't have an SH key yet, you can follow the steps here on how to generate a new one. It's really well documented. Then after that, I'll choose my host name. I would just leave uh, WordPress for, for now. Then if you're running this in production, I would str strongly recommend using backups. And if not, as I'm doing just a demo, I'll just hit the create a droplet button. Then this should take about 50 seconds. So I'm just going to speed up the video so that you don't have to sit and wait for this to complete. Okay, this is done now. Now we are ready to copy our IP address, head over to our terminal and SH to the droplet. So I'll just do SSH root because that's the default username. And then I would paste the IP of the droplet. Then I would hit enter. I would say yes. Then I would type my SSH passphrase. Now we need to finish a quick setup. The first thing that we need to specify is our domain name. As I'm doing just a demo rather than Entering my domain name, what I would do is use my host file on my PC to point a demo domain name to this droplet IP address. To do that, I would just need to open my host file. So I'll just type sudo nano and then the path to the host file, which is edc hosts. If I hit enter, then quickly type my password. And yes, of course, I have to type it again. Okay, so now at the bottom of the file, I would just put the droplet IP, then I would point two demo domains to the droplet. So I would do site1.bobby.sh. I would just put the www version as well. So site one again, bobby.sh. Then what I can do is specify one more site so that I can show you how you can host multiple sites on the same droplet. I would just do a new line, paste the same IP, and I'll do site2, which would be our second website. Then I would again do bobby.sh, and I would put the W version as well. So what essentially the host file does is it tells your computer to skip the DNS lookup and search for the website at the IP that you've specified it. So now if anyone tries to visit this website, this would not work unless you have this line in your host file. I will quickly, quickly save that and exit. So now if I actually try to ping one of the entries, sure enough, it returns the same IP address that we specified in our host file. In a real scenario, you would need to go to a DNS zone and add an A record to point your domain name to your server IP address. Now I have my domain ready, so I'm ready to head back to my terminal. I can now paste it here, hit enter. Now it's asking me for a 
email address. So I'll just put my email address here. And now it's asking me for a username. I'll just put Bobby. Then I'll click the type of password. My title would be Dev Dojo. Okay, that looks good. I would confirm. Now it's asking me if I want to add an SL certificate. However, as those are not actual domains, I would say no. But if you're running this in production, you should definitely install an SL certificate. Okay, so now it's completing the installation. And with that, our website is actually ready. So now if we head over to our browser and if we type the site one .sh. Sure enough, we are actually seeing the website here. However, let's now go ahead and do the same thing for our website number two. So rather than actually creating another server, what we could do is install a second WordPress installation on the same server. The first thing that we would not want to do is to actually go ahead and download the WordPress files. So if we go to the var www folder and if we use the ls command, we can see that we already have an HTML folder where our main WordPress website is stored at. In order to download a fresh copy of WordPress, we can use the wget command followed by wordpress.org slash latest.zip. This will download a copy of the latest WordPress version. We can use the unzip command to unzip the file that we just downloaded. If you type unzip space latest dot zip, this would extract the WordPress files in a WordPress folder. Again, if we use the ls command, we will now be able to see the new folder. What we could do is use the mv command to rename the folder to something more meaningful rather than the generic WordPress name. I'll just put site2.bobby.sh as this is going to be our domain name. If we hit enter and then use the ls command, you can see that the folder was renamed. Now, if you use the ls command inside a folder, you'll be able to see all of the WordPress core files. And also one important thing to notice is that the files are currently owned by the root user. This is going to be a problem as when you try to upload a plugin or a theme via WordPress admin area, this would not be possible. We need to use the chon command to change the ownership to the www.data user, which is the user that our Apache service is running as. Then you need to specify the name of the folder. And one thing that I forgot is the minus capital R which stands for recursive. This would essentially change the owner of the files and the folders to the www data user. If we use the ls command again, we'll be able to see that the owner is now set correctly. Okay, now with that, we are ready with our WordPress files so we can go ahead and get the Apache configuration sorted out. Essentially what we need to do is add another Apache virtual host for the second site. The Apache virtual hosts allow you to have multiple websites hosted on the same server. So if we use the cd command and access the edc apache2 folder and then use the ls command, there's a folder called sites available. That's where we need to go. And then if we copy the default config file, we can use the cp command to do that. So cp, then the name of the default conf, after that, followed by the name of the new conf that we want to create. Let's put site2.bobby.conf. Now, if we use a text editor to open the file, there are a few things that we need to change. The first one is the server name. This essentially needs to match the domain name that you would be using. In my case, it is just site2.bobby.sh. Then the server alias would be the www version of the site. And then the final thing that we need to change is the document root. So we need to specify the path where we have our site file stored at. I'll change HTML to site2 
32.bobby.sh because that's the name of the folder that we used. Save the file and exit. Now, in order to enable the file, we can use a very handy command. Just type a2, then en, which stands for enable, and then site. If you run that, it will show you a list of the files that, we, that you can choose to enable. I'll just put site2.bobby because that's the name of our config file. And now let's run a quick config test to make sure that everything is set up correctly in the new configuration file. To do that, just type apache ctl minus t. As we get syntax OK, we can run the systemctl reload apache2 command to tell apache that it needs to reload the new configuration files. OK, now if we head to our browser again and if we refresh the site1.bobby.sh, we are still seeing the old website. Now, if we go to site2.bobby.sh and access that, we're getting to a new WordPress installation screen. If we click continue, here we are asked to create a new database and a new database username and a password. So let's go to our terminal and take care of that. To access MySQL, just type MySQL. And with that, you are now inside MySQL and you can run some MySQL queries. Let's start by creating a new database. To do that, just type create database and the name of the database. I would just put wp underscore site. Of course, you could use something more descriptive depending on the name of the website. Now let's go ahead and create a user as well. So just type create user. I like to keep my username and the database name identical for simplicity. Then put a net and then followed by percentage sign. After that, type identified by, and here you need to specify a strong password. It is important to use strong database passwords. I'll just copy a generated one and I'll paste it in here. Okay, run that. And the final thing that we need to do is give privileges for the new database user that we created to the new database. To do that, just type grant o privileges on that will be sites.star, essentially that's the database name and all of the tables associated with that database. Then type two and in quotes type the name of the user, which is the same as the name of the database. Finally, put with grant options because that's the new syntax for MySQL 8. Okay, that's sorted out. Now let me quickly copy the password and then head back to my browser. Here, click on the let's go button and fill up the details of the database that we just created. In my case, it's just that will be site, that will be site for the user and then the password. Finally, click the run installation button and here you need to specify some details for the website as normal. So the, the site name, a username, a strong password. Oops, I forgot the email address and then just an email address here as well click on the install WordPress and with that the new WordPress website is up and running. If we visit the site you can see that it's running as expected and then if we go back to site1.bobby.sh we see the other site as well. So now we have the two sites running on the same droplet simultaneously. This is pretty much it. This is how you can have two or more WordPress websites on one single server. If you have any questions, make sure to put them down below. I try to reply to all of the questions that I get on my videos. I hope you find this useful and if so, make sure to click the subscribe button. Thank you and I'll see you next.